Hey, it's me, Rachel, and I want to talk about my 2024 wish list. Now, I know we are well into 2024, but it's only the beginning of February. We're still going to celebrate Lunar New Year, so that's okay. It's okay to talk about what I would like to potentially purchase in the upcoming year. I also wanted to share my wish list now because I think wish lists are so helpful in making sure you save your money appropriately and in honing in on the products that you actually want, that you actually need. By having a wish list, I feel like I'm able to put more thought into what I buy and actually having more intention into those products rather than just like being easily tempted by the latest pretty thing, which still happens. I will say my wish list really quells urges for random spontaneous buys, but also keeps me focused and reminds me, no, 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 put your money towards the thing that you've been saying you want, because that thing's always way more expensive than it should be. Do you have a wish list? Share it with me in the comments and let's talk about what I'm thinking of for this year. All right, first up are the Saint Laurent Aviator sunglasses. Now, sunglasses is a term that I think is being used loosely for this particular pair. Um, they are a beautiful aviator style, but the lenses are just a hint of tint. Some might consider the LaCroix of the sunglass world. The lenses are barely tinted to, from what I've seen on models, influencers, and uh, different websites, but I really like the style. I have this odd issue with darker lenses where I feel like too much is obscured and I can't see. I think that might be an age thing. I think I'm just too old. Also, I'm really feeling the 70s look here and there once in a while. I love color, even though I don't wear that much color. And when I do, I like to do a lot of the retro 70s look. You know, I've been getting into flare jeans again, put an oversized brown blazer over, a uh, knit vest, and with those sunglasses, with those aviators, you know, you look and fly. So yeah, the Saint Laurent aviator sunglasses. Next on my list, a beauty item. And this came out of the blue because I walked into Nordstrom. My husband actually wanted to go shopping for himself. And while I was wandering around waiting for him, I ended up in the beauty section and got sold this Delina body cream. Delina is a um, perfume, a scent by Parfums de Marly. Now this scent is, I consider like a sweet powdery rose scent. This body cream only retails, only retails for $98, which I thought, ooh, deal, you know, for something that is uh, six fluid ounces. And if you use pretty sparingly, it should get you through all of 2024. So there's that. But it obviously has a matching perfume and also uh, some other products, like I think a dry oil or whatnot, but I want the perfume. And the perfume is very expensive. The larger, 2.5 ounce perfume is now $375 because of course it is. I've never purchased perfume at a price point above 150. So investing into a $375 perfume is going to be a lot. And so it makes sense that that is on my wish list because that is going to take some time for me to not only uh, save enough money for that particular buy, but also wrap my head around and, um, you know, get me emotionally ready for that purchase as well. The third thing on my list is interesting in the sense that it has something to do with what I'm filming on right now. I bought the Sony ZV-1 Mark II in the fall of last year as I was beginning this little YouTube journey. I just really wanted something that was more updated than my original G7X. You know, that camera didn't have an audio jack and it's old. I think it's from 2015, 2016. So I wanted to upgrade and update my setup. I watched a lot of reviews and I do like my Sony ZV-1 Mark II. 
However, despite the reviews and the research that I did, I don't know how I missed how bad this camera is in low lighting. If you've seen some of my past videos and I've had any clips that are taken at night, sometimes they look choppy. And I found out from watching reviews that compare this camera with this new camera that I'm considering, the choppiness is because this camera uses digital stabilization. And it makes me realize whether it's day or night, this camera is pretty shaky, shakier than I expected when out and about, which is antithetical to the whole point of being a good vlogging camera. Now, the item that I was about to talk about is something that came out probably a week after I purchased this camera. So it's incredibly frustrating that it happened so soon <laughs> to me having put in and gotten all worked up to be, okay, this is the one, this is the one I'm gonna get. Um, but I will say that I think I like having this anyways. And if I were to get this other camera, having this other camera in my life as well. So having the two as part of my whole YouTube thing. Anyways, I haven't even mentioned it yet. What I'm talking about is the DJI Pocket 3. So the DJI Pocket 3 is supposed to be great in everyday settings. I watched a comparison of the Pocket 3 versus the Sony ZV-1 and the low lighting part of that review was so incredibly interesting. The contrast was stark between the two. And then I saw a great review by this YouTuber who I am going to put into the description below. I can't remember her name, but the way that she actually talked about how useful the Pocket 3 is for her life really seemed to suit much more of my needs and really speak to how I want to be able to create content and capture content. So yeah, I pretty sure I'm gonna get the Pocket 3 and I just need to wait and save more money for it because I did just buy this thing. And also that little microphone setup I mentioned in my last video uh, about my, what I got on my birthday. So the next thing on my wish list is another tech item and it is the Apple iMac. I would love to have an iMac because I just think they're beautiful, number one. Number two, they seem more suitable for heavy, video editing and graphics work. And it would be nice to have a new personal desktop. I would totally get the green one to match my Apple AirPod Maxes, but I also want to get the one that has, I think a lot more memory, has specs that are just friendlier to a creator. And that is gonna cost about $2,400. So I'm not looking to spend that much right now, but you know, little by little, if I just, plug away at my savings, I should be able to get enough and be able to seriously consider it sometime later this year. Okay, so I wanna keep with the tech theme, but this next item is probably not gonna happen. I just think it'd be really cool to get it. I am definitely not prioritizing it though. And it would be the Apple Vision Pro. Now, have you seen it? because it just got released. Essentially, it's spatial computing. That is the branding for this particular item, but it looks like a virtual reality headset and kind of verges on VR, right? I think, I don't know, I'm not a VR expert, but I've watched I Just Seen and Marquez Brownlee and some other creators talk about it and showcase what it actually does and how to use it. And I really want to have it. I want to be immersed in things. I want to be able to throw up the Mandalorian or Ahsoka on my headset through Disney Plus and feel like I'm in the show. So yeah, the Apple Vision Pro, which is about $4,000. Um, I get on my wish list, but probably at the very bottom. All right, so let me talk a little bit about the luxury items that have actually been on my wish list and are just continuing on into 2024. I actually have no particular intention of buying these things unless I come across them 
happen to have the money for them and maybe there's a bit of a reason to buy at that point, whether there's a price increase coming or maybe I find them secondhand and can get a good deal, you know? So these are the luxury items. So let's first talk Cartier and I want two items from Cartier one day, maybe, maybe not. The first is the Juston Club bracelet. And I mean, it's pretty punk rock. The design is a nail wrapped around your wrist. I don't know, it's pretty cool. And then the second is the love bracelet, but it's a basic bitch bracelet, right? Everyone who can afford it has it. And it seems like a lot of people have it, but I like a bangle and it's grown on me, even though I still wonder, do I really like it or have I been conditioned by the repetition of seeing it? to like it. Unclear. And so therefore, kind of at a low end of my wish list. The next of the luxury brands that I have on my wish list is Chanel. And I can't afford the classic flap anymore. I actually do have a classic flap, which is a vintage one given to me by my friend Jasmine as a going away gift when I moved to New York. Um, it's vintage is from, I believe 94. I tried to look up the serial number and I think it's like 93 or 94. Um, so of course I kind of want a more modern piece and I want one in the caviar leather classic, either small or medium black, uh, double flap. Now the price increases have been incredibly ridiculous. I am priced out. What Chanel wanted to do was price out normal people and I'm, one of those people, so I'm out. But I would like to explore my vintage options, especially because everything before 2008 that has gold hardware should be plated in 24 karat gold. And so I feel like quality is probably better anyways to go with a vintage piece. So yeah, I would like to get a vintage Chanel caviar classic flap in black and gold hardware. So the next Chanel piece on my wish list is the Diana bag, which is also vintage. I've been in love with this style since I saw it on Alyssa Lenore. It does also come in a caviar leather, but at an insane price point. The other versions, which are probably just lambskin, are beautiful as well. If I come across a Diana bag in good condition at a good, reasonable price, then maybe I would consider it. I've seen it on Facebook groups. I've seen it floating around on Fashion File and um, personal shopper websites, but haven't done it yet. And so maybe one day, maybe this year, maybe some other day. Oh, there's another bag on my Chanel wish list, and that is the Chanel mini flap in the so black style. That means black hardware on either black lambskin, calfskin, or caviar leather. And yeah, I would like that. I would like to own a classic flap in mini, small, or medium in the so black style because I think that's kind of cool and a little more rock and roll. I don't know if I give off rock and roll. Um, but I do love music and I am wearing my Beyonce Renaissance tour merch. So, you know, representing the beehive. Okay, finally, let's end my 2024 wish list with the places that I would love to go to this year. Number one being Japan. Now, I have been dreaming of going to Tokyo for years. My husband has been and while he had a great time, now this is very long ago, he hasn't felt all that excited about going to Asia simply because of how long the trip takes. I have been able to convince him that if we splurge, save and splurge on business class seats, then maybe it wouldn't be so bad. And I finally got him to agree. And then my parents-in-law, who take care of our dog Poe when we're away, decided that the length of time that they would be willing to watch her was much shorter than we thought. And you really can't do Asia for less than two weeks. So we're in a bind. I don't know if Japan's actually going to happen. If anything, if we can 
full like 10 days from then. Maybe it's just Tokyo. So that's a possibility. I'm really, really trying to figure it out. If Japan doesn't happen, I'm considering maybe potentially we try to go to Portugal or Greece. I've never been to either. I really should go to Greece because having been a classical civilizations major, I would think that I should visit the place that I spent so much time studying about. And yeah, I actually concentrated on Greek civilizations, but for some reason have only really in person seen, you know, artifacts and um, ruins of Roman civilization. So I should do that. That would make more sense. So, oh, I will say that I am this year going to be able to go to Spain, which I haven't been to since 2002, 2003. A friend of mine will be celebrating his love with his partner there, and we are all invited to celebrate them. And so, yeah, we will be going to San Sebastian, Spain. Okay, that's everything that's on my wish list for this year to date. Obviously, things might change as we go through the year, and I will happily provide an update in a few months. In any event, if you have a wish list of your own, please let me know in the comments what you're planning or hoping to buy or um, save up for. And if you like it here, please subscribe, follow, do those things, engage, you know? Um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.